Good morning, friend. Welcome. I'm really glad you're here. Let's ask God to guide our time together with this song. Guide me, guide me, won't you guide me? God guides us. That's our Bible point today. Every time you hear those words, God guides us, I want you to say, follow God. Let's try it together. God guides us. Follow God. I am so thankful that God guides us. Follow God. Let's show God we love him by singing another song. He loves to hear us praise him. To think about the goodness of the Lord He gives me everything I need and so much more So I just want to lift my hands And say that I love Him I just want to lift my heart in praise And I want to be thankful I want to be grateful I want to remember everything That the Lord has done I want to be thankful I want to be grateful I want to be I want to be I want to be I like to think about the goodness of the Lord He gives me everything I need and so much more So I just want to lift my hands And say that I love Him I just want to lift my heart in
Let's check in with our Bible memory buddy, Radar. How much do you know about bats? I wonder how fast they can fly. Let's find out. Let's watch the video. Hi, I'm Radar, your favorite bat buddy. Hey, can I ask you a question? How did you get here today? Did you walk or ride in a car? Or maybe take the bus? Or did you fly through the air like me? Wee! Guess what? We bats are the only mammals who can fly. There are some mammals that glide from tree to tree like flying squirrels. But we bats are the only ones that have mastered the art of high flying through the air. Prepare for takeoff. Of course, birds fly too, but they aren't mammals. Plus, they have feathers, we don't. We're furry and cute too, if I do say so myself. What do you think? Bats fly, and we can fly fast. Some of my bat friends can fly 100 miles an hour. We bats enjoy flying through the moonlight under the razzling dazzling stars. If you ever have to find your way in the dark, you probably use a flashlight to see where you're going. But bats don't need light to know where we're headed. We use a cool thing called echolocation. Echolocation means we make little noises. Then we listen for how those sounds bounce off of things. Those sounds let us know where we are and what's in front of us. It's pretty awesome. Like bats call out and listen for a direction, you can call out to God and ask him to guide you. In the Bible, book of Proverbs, chapter three, verses five and six, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. God showed Moses and the Israelites what to do in the book of Exodus in the Bible. He gave them guidelines to help them love God and live their lives in a special way that honored God and each other. People call these guidelines the Ten Commandments, and they still guide all God's people today. God loves all people, and he wants everyone to love and honor him too. Sometimes it might be hard for you to follow God's guidance and stay on track. Maybe you want to go your own way instead of God's way. But God's rules aren't meant to control or keep you from having fun. <laughs> no way! God's guidelines show how much he loves you and that he wants the best for you. God guides us. It's been great hanging out with you. Can I tell you a joke before I go? What's the first thing bats learn at school? The alphabet. Ha <laughs> ha Well, I've got to fly. Bye bye. God guides us through the Bible. And the Bible has two main sections, an Old Testament and a New Testament. The word testament means promise or covenant. And our Bible memory verse has a promise for us from God. It's Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Let's say the verse together. I'll say a line and you repeat after me. Are you ready? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do. And he will show you which path to take. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Good job, you guys. So God's word is so important in our lives. It helps us remember that God guides us. Follow God. We can always talk to God and he'll help us know the way to go. Let's sing about that. In my wrestling, in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you, my my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore.
Today in our Bible story, we are going to learn about the Ten Commandments. Those are the rules in the Bible that God gave his people, the Israelites, and they're rules that guard, guide our lives too. In life, we have rules that guide and help us. In today's Bible passage, we're going to hear the special rules that God gave us because he loves us. The Bible passage we'll explore today is from the book of Exodus in your Bible. Can you go grab that? Are you ready? Here we go. So one day, a man named Moses, who was the leader of God's people, climbed a mountain so he could meet with God away from the Israelite people. On the mountain, God talked to Moses. He gave Moses important rules to take back down to the mountain to the people. We often call these rules the Ten Commandments. Why do you think God gave the Israelites these rules? Hmm. Hmm. Well, God guides us. Follow God. And God loved his people. He wanted them to live differently so other people would know they belonged to him. And he wanted them to show and live in loving ways and show the world how special God is. So there was Moses on the mountain talking with God. Who gets to talk to God like that? <laughs> Later, God wrote these special rules for his people on tablets so that they would remember what is really important. Let's find out what God told Moses first. We're going to read from Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 4 and 7. God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. We worship one God and we respect God's name. We're going to try something. Say your name in a really grumpy, mean voice. Samantha. Now, what was it like to hear and say your name in that way? It probably didn't feel really good. Now, this time I want you to say your name in a loving and friendly voice. Samantha, how did you feel? It probably felt a lot better, huh? <laughs> See, God's name is the most special name of all, and God is holy. Holy means special and set apart, unlike anyone else, and God is special, so we must treat him with respect and treat his name with respect. So you, God guides us, follow God. Let's read another rule about families from Exodus 20, verse 12. Honor your father and your mother so that you may live long in the land of the Lord your God is giving you. When we honor our moms and dads, we are loving our families. We can honor our parents or caregivers in a lot of ways. Maybe it's helping mom fold laundry or helping dad with dishes. Maybe it's as simple as giving someone a hug. God wants us to show his love to the families he's given us. We're going to put this love into action. I want you to think of one way that you can show your parent or caregiver that you honor and love them. Now be creative and try to think above and beyond your normal chores. Now be sure you love on them sometime today. So you see, God guides us, follow God. We're gonna read another rule about how we should treat other people. This is in Exodus 20, verse 13 and 15 through 17. You shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or his manservant, or maidservant, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. When we exclude people, that's hurtful. And it doesn't feel very good when people do things that hurt us. Stealing, lying, cheating, being really mean can hurt others. And that's why God tells us not to do those things. When we do them, we're not valuing and loving people like God does. God guides us. Follow God. And God loves us and wants us to love others. His rules are important because they guide us and show us how to live in a way that honors him. So we're going to go read Matthew verse 22, 36 through 40 together really quick. Matthew. Matthew. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. 
love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. Jesus tells us that the most important thing is to love God and others. We can always trust that God's rules are good and will protect us because he loves us so much. What's one way you can love God, love your family, or love everyone this week? I want you to really try to act on that idea. Show God's love. It's really a good and fun idea. God guides us. Follow God. God loves us even though he knows we won't follow his rules perfectly. We are human after all. And our sin sometimes causes us to choose rules we make up, like it's okay to lie or no one will know. Our rules can get us in trouble, but God's rules rescue us. Jesus came to save us too. And Jesus is God's perfect son who came to earth to save us from our sin and be our forever friend. Thank you, Jesus. All right, that's all for today. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next week.